Every so often, my workload splits in twain between my life and entertain. If my upload schedule remains, I might go insane. Thus, before this video begins, I wanted to make a somewhat somber announcement. I'm adopting a reduced upload schedule for the next few weeks. As my workload from school picks up, inversely, my free time to make videos dwindles, and each video takes a substantial amount of time to make. Rest assured, I'll still try to make videos as frequently as I can, and I'll still be active on my Discord server and, of course, replying to comments. Anyways, let's get on with the video! Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 2 of Red Odyssey, where we'll try to colonize the Jupiter system. We're currently docking the last crew scout to the station, still haven't figured out what to call it just yet, and we're getting our first glimpse of the Asimov. But surprise, this ship isn't heading out to the Jupiter system, because before we can head out to there, we need to refine our colony ship design, test new vehicles, and what better place to do that than our very close neighbor, the Moon. So think of this as a mock-up of the real thing, because if anything goes wrong, we can quite easily send a replacement part. We're currently launching the Crew Arrow, the bigger brother of the Crew Scout. And I forgot to mention, we're playing in a custom installation of ACSS, which stands for Actually Complete Solar System. So it changes the stock planet, and also adds that day-night cycle that you just saw a few seconds ago. We're docking with the station, and unfortunately, we cannot time warp near to it because the Asimov adds so much mass that um, time warp just freezes the game and it crashes. So we have to actually switch to a different craft outside of the sphere of influence or loading range of the Asimov and its station. We just had to retract those solar panels there to squeeze past the crew scout and into our very tight docking spot. We had a pretty perfect docking this time. If you watched the last episode, you know I'm terrible, absolutely terrible at it. But now it's time to launch the Asimov, our lunar colonization ship. Leaving dry dock, we fire up the engines in one moment, and we say goodbye to Earth and we're heading off on our lunar adventure. Oh, it's a pretty great time to mention that I am playing with a custom set of rules that I just made up myself. One of which is that um, astronauts need oxygen, water, and food, and also that they need living space. So this ship fits all of the requirements. So the um, silver tanks, the silver balls, are called oxygen balls, and they provide enough oxygen for a total of three astronauts. The water balls, each of them, provides enough for six astronauts, and the hydroponics domes each provide enough food for two astronauts. We start our translunar in translunar burn, I guess, and we have a pretty terrible TWR for a ship this size. But it's not as bad as some of my other colony ships. We've just applied 1000 times speed in order to get this burn done in a reasonable amount of time on the video. It was over 600 meters per second, which isn't that much, but the ship did use more um, fuel than I actually anticipated, so we cut our fuel margins quite fine. We only had like 20% left from all three fuel tanks. And with that, we have our encounter with the moon in just a second, lowering or refining our orbit. And we're transferring all the fuel from that detachable fuel tank. As you can see, we didn't actually um, time warp with the ship. We had to switch to another vessel so it wouldn't load all of that. And we just left that expendable fuel tank. And we are completing our capture burn, lunar injection burn, I guess. Lunar orbit injection burn. We're in a high orbit. Uh, we'll be lowering that later later in the episode. And as you can see, we have a 12% fuel margin. Not great for my preference. Zooming out, we get a quick glimpse, a very momentarily, momentary glimpse of the moon. And now it's time to scout out our future landing location. We're actually going to be landing near where the launch pad would spawn on the moon because one of the rules in my 
fake rules, I guess, is that、um, colonies with eight people, eight astronauts, can launch craft under 50 tons. That's a tier one colony. I、um, actually moved the launch pad already, but we legally can't launch craft in my rules until we have the eight astronauts and the colony all set up. Astronauts also have similar requirements on a moon or. Um, surface as they do in orbit and on ships, and we have a pretty disastrously off pinpoint landing. Not you can't really call it pinpoint. We had I got better at it over the course of the mission, but we've landed on the moon, and we there's the launch pad right there with its two markers, which I just cheated over there.、Um, now it's time to launch the oxygen module. Which we'll be bringing down with our orbital sky crane. We have two types of sky cranes: one with those frontier engines for larger payloads, and one with、um, four broadsword engines. I don't know what they're called. It's the small one used for landers. We're just landing them on the launch pad because why not? It's some flat ground to put them on. And、um, funny enough,、um, the sky crane actually disappeared for some reason. I actually took a break, and then when I came back, it disappeared. But I couldn't be bothered to reload the quick save. Back up on the Asimov, we、uh, lower our orbit slightly to put us into a lower orbit, which will make launching payloads, the sky cranes, back up, and also、uh, bring stuff down a lot easier and take a lot less fuel. We've just captured into low lunar orbit, so about 17 kilometers. We are now landing our temporary fuel tank, which will used to be be used to refuel our sky cranes until we get our colony set fully set up and we can launch fuel and that sort of stuff from the launch pad under 50 tons. So we've landed on the surface of the moon using those、um, little engines. I forgot what they're called. The sky crane couldn't actually lift this in my test, and there we go. So. Get a nice view of what we've landed already, and back up on the Asimov, like a story. We have our another oxygen module landing. This it actually took 60 seconds for me to dock the sky crane to there, so I sped that up like、uh, 20 times, I think. <laughs> kind of funny. We've landed on the surface of the moon right next to our our other oxygen extractor. And after refueling at that little fuel tank, there we we're going to head back up. The TWR of this, the sky crane, when not attached to anything, is actually quite crazy. It's a sky crane, so we overshot, and our apoapsis was 24 or 26 kilometers instead of 17, which is what our colony ship is at. We've reached low lunar orbit. But here we are docking with the Asimov again, and we make another pretty perfect docking, actually, surprisingly, with a lot of adjustments. But we did it, docked in low moon orbit. They should really change it to lunar, but whatever. Now we're bringing down the water extractors with the smaller of our two sky cranes with those engines, the four lander engines, whatever you call them. We're just lowering our orbit onto a collision course with the moon, but I've gotten pretty good at those pinpoint landings. You just have to make the approach steeper.、The、pinpoint landings aren't actually that hard as I'm making them out to be, at least on low gravity worlds.、Uh, I actually did a cut there; <laughs> something came up, but、um, we tilt dangerously right there. Because I、well, I stopped paying attention and I accidentally pressed it, but I saved the landing、uh, with a bit of luck, or I mean, it was pure skill, pure skill, my pure skill saved the landing, and now it's time for our sky crane to return back up to bring the other water module back. We had a pretty tight fuel margin, 5.7 percent, grand total. <laughs> It, this one isn't designed to really carry stuff to orbit, but we did it anyways. It's more used for moving stuff around. But with the sky crane refueled, we 
make our way up back up to orbit, and this one even has an even higher TWR, so I quickly shut off the engine quickly before Apoapsis gets too high and we waste some fuel. And there we go, we're reaching orbit, or lunar orbit, it says reach low moon orbit instead of lunar orbit, but whatever, and back up on the Asimov, it's pretty fun to say that, um, we're just zooming by to the docking port, and refueling the sky crane. Not very interesting, but this is the second landing, or second water extractor landing, and we almost get into position. We're still heading downwards, but we have a big fuel margin this time of 18%, nearly. Uh, we almost bump into there, but my skill saved it. Yeah, and I got this first try. Ahem, <clears throat> honest. Anyhow, it's time to rearrange all the modules. In a second, we just move everything around. So that includes the oxygen extractors, um, the water extractors, uh, nothing much to say really, water extractor there. Uh, this is sped up to about a 100 times speed actually. We move the crew scout a little bit, then the other, the first water extractor, I reloaded a quick save. And, oh, yeah, quick saving was a very important part in this mission because, or else I would have messed up. I messed up like a hundred times. You should just see the random assortment of quick saves I have in the save menu. And the more quick saves you have, the slower the saving time is. It like freezes sometimes, but anyhow. This is our habitation module. Please note that the habitation module design will probably change since I'm not that happy with it. In fact, everything in this series can change at my discretion because I'm in control of it, of all the rules I made them up. And there's our second habitation module landing. We crossfade there to the big fuel tank being moved by the large sky crane. <laughs> the small sky crane can move it. Er, it would it went so slow that it wasn't worth doing, so we were using the big sky crane, landing it back on the surface of the moon, and it has those landing legs for its parked position. We're moving the crew scout a little bit to the other side of the base near the habitation modules because it's the escape pod, although it only holds one astronaut. There's a command pod clipped into the body of there, and also a probe core for remote control. Haha, <laughs> RC. And when we refuel, we time warp and we clip back into the moon's surface, kind of funny, but we eventually finish, and it's time to move. And with those oscillations of the throttle up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, we land it right next to there. Well, almost, actually. We tip over and destroy an RCS port. We can't have that, but there we go. All landed, but back up on the Asimov, we drain the remainder of our fuel, the last dregs, back into the crew arrow. We actually ran out of fuel to fuel up all of the sky cranes and that sort of stuff, so I had to take out all of the fuel from the crew arrow. And the remainder, the last dregs, at least, refueled at a grand total of 50%, but our eight astronauts are heading back down to the surface, or heading down to the surface, they haven't ever been there before, and um, we're leaving four behind because another one of the tier one colony requirements that I just made up is that we need a space station that can house four astronauts, and, um, and a colony in addition to a colony that can house eight on the surface. We did a bit of maneuvering there, but a uh, fun fact, I actually launched the crew arrow. I made like a commercial about it because I was pretty proud of it. I did the voiceover work two weeks ago 
and I recorded the footage for it a week ago. And there, it was actually launched from the colony here because the launch pad was already on the moon and we could do all sorts of cool tricks in the low gravity. But with the touchdown of the crew arrow landing on the surface of the moon, that marks the arrival of our eight astronauts to Alvature, which is the name of our lunar colony. But more importantly, that means that we can now launch rockets under 50 tons on from Alvature's launch pad is pretty cool so we're launching this rocket which is 45.6 tons to the asimov the lift off of that marks the start of an era brand new era of space flight and here we are this brand new rocket which is probe controlled to save weight of course funny enough the a mass of the asimov actually decreased so much from launching all of the modules that we can time warp around it now, which is just great. And there we are, docked to the Asimov in lunar orbit, and we brought up a grand total of 7.9% fuel. Amazing. But with that marks the end of our 16 minute video. Thank you for watching to the very end. I've been Consolidated, and goodbye!